And now, only on KGRA Radio, this is the Starborn Connection. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Starborn Connection radio show. I want to thank everybody for tuning in across the United States, around the world, outbound through the solar system to the heliopause, all the way out to Andromeda. But uh, you guys in Andromeda, you won't be hearing this for about five years. Uh, And about now, you're probably picking up our early shows. Uh, Just wanted to let you guys in Andromeda know this is our fifth consecutive year on the air. Yes. Yay. (laughs) <laughs> okay uh welcome julia and bill how are you guys doing this week doing just great excellent excellent bill yeah well i had a little incident tonight but oh, I'm, oh yeah i'm raring yeah, yeah. to go oh. looking forward to tonight's show and the guests so beautiful beautiful yeah. Well, tonight we have a pretty busy show, so I'm not going to keep me up in here. We have uh, three events that are going to be taking place tonight. The first hour, we're going to be talking to our good friend and resident psychic, Pam Lofredo. Then I have some very fascinating news concerning the Podraska sisters and what happened to them about two weeks ago now. Uh, the attempted, uh, I will call it, assassination of, of the the two ufologists and their dad, which is not a good thing. And then Julia will have a half hour, I think, for her ascension this week, maybe a little more because she hasn't been able to do it because of the guests across the past, uh, what, three or four weeks, Julia? We had some great guests. That was did. Oh, we did. But but we owe you some time. Lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff happening. Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, your your transition and, and the changes that you've gone through uh, are very fascinating, and I think it will help people out there kind of make sense of maybe what's happening to them. So, right. all right, gang, uh, let's get on with the show. I want to introduce to everyone uh, Ms. Pam Lafredo. I'm not going to read a bio because I'm going to say, hello, Pam, how you doing? I'm good, and I'm here. Ah, it's good to hear you. Good to hear you. Good to have you on again. And uh, I want you to tell our audience who you are and how you got to where you are today. All right. Well, that might take the whole hour, but. <laughs> uh, well, give us a five minute rundown. That's all. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I have like memories since age four. Mm-hmm. of all kinds of activity that really had me in intense states of fear. Uh, at the time, I was quite young, so I, like, you know how you kind of have a reference of something, so that's what your reference is? Um, alligators under my bed, alligators coming into my room at night, which we know what that points to. Many yeah. years later, I figured out that that was the reptilians mm-hmm. early in life, all right? I, I know that they were trying to scare me. That was pretty obvious, all right, in every way. And I don't remember them doing me any harm. I also remember a voice in my head in my closet, which was my little place that I used to go to. Everybody knew that that was my little fort, you know, and I'd go in there and do my thing. And whatever. I had all my stuff in there, all my cool things, whatever that I collected when I was like seven or eight. But I always felt the need to pull away from everyone and everything and go into a little amount of isolation. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would, I would hear beings talk to me in my mind senses then, like I do right now, mm-hmm. only over many years, I've gotten really good at that, <laughs> yeah. as you can imagine. That's been tweaked, you know? Um, Absolutely. so I remember them telling me when I was a small child that no harm would ever come to me. I did. I remember that. And that felt more angelic, but you know, the angels... And the extraterrestrials, some of them are angelic in nature and some not so. Um, So I feel like the words that we have, the reference words that we've used over time to, you know, describe the beings out there. We call them gods. We call them angels. Um, You know, a lot of native people call them star beings and star people and different things. 
Um, but it really is like that reference point. And some of that has to do with conditioning. And I really don't believe that the native people had any real conditioning other than, you know, prophecies handed down, information from the elders passed mm-hmm. down. Um, so, you know, that's more like, um, I think that the native people had a connection to, uh, not just like the star people, but maybe the same star people, the Mayan people, did. you know, that right, kind of right. extraterrestrial direct connection. Um, when you are tribal like that and you live off the earth and you don't have the things that we do, um, there's an element of purity there and simplicity. And I feel that maybe ETs were less afraid to come to them, contact them, you know, back in the day. Right. And gave them the information they could never have. They didn't have the books. They didn't have the resources. There was no library and there was no computer. So where did they get this information? Well, some of it was handed down from generations. And still, it's the same story, all right? They're talking about those beings up there. All right, so anyway, I've been in contact with beings on different levels whether it's telepathic through my mind senses. And I mean, they give me images, words, bold words in my mind's eye. Um, It's harder to see that stuff with my eyes open. So often Mm -hmm. I'll close my eyes. They'll show me, show me words, show me images, tell me things. Um, Sometimes it's like streaming video. They'll show me a series of events and how it plays out. So you've Um, developed, you've developed, uh, developed a pretty good rapport with these, uh, these beings. (laughs) Oh, yeah. A lot of my guides are extraterrestrials. Okay. And that started to happen um, back in the day when I'd say I already moved to Maine because by the time I was moved here from New York, I was still terrified. And I really still believed. I was ignorant enough back in 1992 to believe that if I moved far enough away from New York, maybe Maine's far enough, that I could, like, throw them off and they wouldn't find me. Uh-huh. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Um, but I got to tell you, I turned around the whole scenario, which I've spoken about that at the conference that I've spoken at, Starborn conference, um, how I was able to change the contact scenario by really understanding my power, free will, um, the whole victimhood thing, the whole possible per- participatory thing where maybe I agreed to this. Maybe yeah, I, yeah. Something I need to not fear and overcome that and try to understand it. And then take my power back and tell them, yeah, I don't want it to stop, but you're not doing it the way you do it. You're doing it my way or it will. The highway for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. You have to really That's that put strong down a boundary. Will. That strong will, yes. You got to put down a boundary. Well, you got to find that will. There's so much fear and confusion. And oh, there you think is. You're really, you can't talk to people about it. When you're younger, back then, I'm 54 now. Right? When I was going through a lot of this at a young age, in my teens and 20s especially, that's when they really want you. All right? They do. I think that's your happy time of fertilization where they want those more than any other age frame. All right? Yeah. And that's when I had a lot of my contact, and yet I don't have a lot of memory at all of being part of the hybrid program. I had a totally different role as a contact age. Um, I was in charge of comforting those babies because I had all the healing ability that I do. Um, and I have a sense of inner calm and inner peace that just came with me from birth. Mm-hmm. Right? No matter what's going on, I'm able to center and witness and observe it around me. And yeah, I might stand there petrified, but I'm desperately trying to put up some kind of shield so that it's like a pillow under that level of trauma that I'm witnessing. Right, right. And your MCAF, that's like, you don't want to hear even people describe things that are suffrage and difficult. You, you feel it, you see it. It's like, all right, that's all. Too much information. Now, is, is, <laughs> holding, is, now. is holding that shield in place, is that a difficult thing to do, you know, maintaining that shield? It isn't until you master it, but it is until you do. Mm. Remember there the work go. that I do? I deal with people every day. This is what I do. I'm a psychic, and I do readings constantly. I've yes, already done do. about 15 I've done a good, let's see, six on Friday and another seven today, all right, just in two days. That's how many Listen, readings I've done. Uh, while, we're, while we're on the psychic thing, why don't you tell people where you, where you do your uh, work at so that maybe somebody can visit you? All right. Well, the thing is, is no matter where you are in the world, as long as you speak good English, you can call that number and do a reading with me. Oh, yeah. It doesn't yes. matter where I can read you. 
But um, you, you, you do have a place. I want to, I want to, uh, sell, sell it. <laughs> Leap in Lizard. Yes. And you can go to the website, leapinlizard.biz, B-I-Z. And I've been there next month, July. It's my 13 year anniversary there. Oh, wow, congrats. Wow. 13 years. Um, and so I have a following, but I have a lot of referrals. So I'm busy and you know, it just, it just keeps branching off. And again, I have all these other things that I'm into and that I do. Um, besides that, like all the healing work and it isn't just the Reiki, I get the life machine. I'm into vibrational and, um, energy medicine. I really believe that light, sound and frequency, color, all that is the wave of the future of true healing. Um, I've been in stargates with them and they've done healings on me inside of, inside of these star chamber type things. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I oh. myself not stargate a star chamber. I'm sorry. Um, I, that's what they called it. And they literally put me in there and there was nothing but color. And it's not even the colors in the spectrum that we're aware of. These are no. uh, very interesting colors that are, um, just beautiful. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there are colors above and below our visual band there. Yeah. They're higher vibrating colors. Um, and it seems like almost all of them have some kind of silvery or gold, overtone or undertone or something to that. It's like a sparkling effect. Um, so, well, I have anyway. questions. I have questions coming in, uh, from the chat room already. Um, okay. so you want me to, want me to hand one to you here? Yeah. Okay. Right. Remember get to the whole Niebuhr thing too. <laughs> okay. No, no, we're going to get to that. Uh, our, one of our, uh, uh, faithful chat room people, her name is Lorraine wants to know how does how does prophecy say our fate as humans will play out? Is our fate sealed? All right. Well, I don't believe that because I believe energy can be altered, especially if there's a lot of people focusing in the same direction. Even though Saddam has talked about that, it really depends on us, too. We do have free will, and then there's an element of divine will and cosmic will. And, I, you know, the thing about this is it's cyclical. This happens every 3,600 years, and it's been recorded. Just look at, go, go to the right places, geology. You know, you got to go back to ancient, ancient Sumerian texts. you got to go back. I think that's a lot of in the Iraq War, what we were after over there, and when we looted those museums, and we took Mesopotamian and Assyrian information, and God knows where it is. I think it's hiding somewhere. <laughs> yeah, really? You know, my son came out with something out of the blue. I don't know why, but he did. My son came <laughs> out with something out of the blue the other day. When I mentioned where did all that information go? Is the government have it? Did it? Some of the military people that grabbed it, do they have Who has it? My son out of the blue says, I think it's in Saudi Arabia. Now, I don't know why he said hmm. that. But out of all these, you know, Muslim countries over there, all right? Now, Saudi Arabia and Israel are our allies, I believe, as far as I know. Anyway, wow. uh, you know, they say that there is a stargate in Iraq, which is the stairway to heaven which is the old Babylon, the Garden of Eden, you know, cradle of civilization. And there's, why do you think, I feel like we've been at war with that whole area for a reason, right? It's not yeah. even about religion. It's not about religion, all right? I feel like it's the roots of civilization, which is our ancestry, you know? Uh -huh. Forget about the religious part of it, all right? I mean, we're all connected, or we all branched off and rooted off, and I believe we've been seeded here for many areas, as different seed races from different places, all right? Uh -huh. And that's why I think sometimes we look different, and there's so many different species, and now we're doing that. We're, like, creating new species, new flowers. We're mutating things. We're doing it. We're doing genetics. Come on, we've been doing it. So what can they do, and what have they been doing? Right. And how do we get here, really? I don't believe in Darwin stuff. I think that's crap. We do. All right? So if you look at the whole other side, of how we may really have gotten here. <laughs> yeah, really. I believe that we may have been kind of mutated with certain creatures, like an ape, maybe, um, that is most like us, and they use their own DNA, I believe, to create what we are. So I feel like we're part of, you know, some hybrid experiment all the way around, some seeding to see if life would evolve. Isn't that what survival even means? 
It does. Evolution it does. means survival yeah. of the fittest. You know, there's going to be that culling away of the weak, the ones that can't make it through a certain situation, like all that flu years ago. Yeah, but people live. Yeah. Not, there's a reason. Again, that sometimes the immune system, the DNA, whatever it is, they're able to transmute that somehow, and it doesn't take over them. So you're uh, saying you're I, saying you're saying that prophecy is flexible, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, well, the prophecy fatal. Is there because of past times. It's like right. we're trying to learn from history. History repeats itself. What are we learning? And yet, if we don't remember that, and we don't remember any of that except for what we have that's been left behind around it, you know, we try to focus on the whole fear of it, the whole horrible, catastrophic, oh my god, thing, and. What if that's not really just the way it is? Mm. What if the end of a time kind of goes out with a bang and the new earth, new world, you know, which is the ascension, which is mm. moving up into a higher vibrational frequency. And who's to say that the earth itself may not move because of what is about to go down into some other parallel frequency or universe or whatever mm. and start Rotating in, a, in a another, you know, rotation. The Earth, um, I believe, uh, rotates counterclockwise. Mm. While Nemesis rotates clockwise. That's interesting. Our little binary second sun, that tiny little dwarf star, that's like 1% the mass of Earth. I mean, of the sun, I'm sorry, of the sun, our sun. Uh, it's only 1% the mass. It's a, dwarf, it's a brown dwarf star. Right. Right. I've heard that. It, yeah. And it is the sun, the life giving force like our sun to the little planetary solar system around it, which is known as the Nibiru system. OK. So, yeah. You, you were going to tell us some things about Nibiru. All right. Well, it's not just about Nibiru. All right. Because Nibiru is one of, I believe, seven planetary bodies right now that are all gathering around the sun. This is happening now, but it's been coming to this place. It just didn't happen suddenly, right? The closer it gets to us, our solar system, our sun, as it's moving through, remember, this didn't happen for 3,600 years ago, mm, which would, right. take, would take us to B.C. before Christ. Now, does that, does that follow necessarily follow like that, the Mayan calendar or any particular culture's uh, kind of rotational uh, predictions? All right. Well, let's throw this out there because I, you know, I, I'm a thinker, so I like try to mentally wrap around things. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking if we're in the year after the death of Christ, 2017 AD, then, you know, let's just throw the 17 aside and look at the 2000 factor. Right. If this is a three thousand, if this is a three thousand six hundred year cycle, then you're talking about another sixteen hundred years there. Okay. All right. And so, what happened during that time before the AD? All right. That's all your ancient history. That's all maybe where some of the Bible and all this came out. Right. And so right. you got to look at that stuff as the way it was presented to them. You know, when they talk in the Old Testament of Elizabeth and some of these people living to be on her seventh. 700 years old, all right, and stuff like that. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if that's more metaphoric, but again, how do we know that they weren't some direct descendant of the Anunnaki or other race of extraterrestrials? They well, yeah, that, that's, that's, out how 700 yeah. years. I, I always thought that maybe a long time ago uh, they measured time differently because of their influences. Um, you know, so 700 years might translate to, you know, maybe 100 years here or, uh, in our day and age anyway. Yeah, or the number of their year times 10 or something for whatever reason would make it 700 if they were 70. Yeah. And again, we don't know why that's that way, and I don't know how literal – you, you take some things in the Bible, but I feel like that there is a message there. There is totally a code there. Mm -hmm. um, there's information there, too. Um, it's just the way that it's written um, that makes you interpret or think about it or have your own direct experience through your own like, religious or upbringing or whatever, your current spiritual practices. Um, and so everybody's got their own direct experience, which is their personal subjective perception. And mm -hmm. because of that, that's okay. That's important. 
I mean, there's nobody out there that's objective is going to tell me that what happened to me didn't happen to me. Yeah. Even though it was subjective. <laughs> well, I know yeah, it's right. free. Right? I've, I've had it backed up. I've been validated in so many ways, in, in, in insane, crazy ways, synchronicity, information that comes to you out of the blue. And it's like, uh-huh. you know what? <laughs> that is yeah. almost scarily validating. It's almost like you don't want that validation. You'd almost rather think that this isn't real. Somehow, you know, like maybe this is some other thing, like dimensional, and nobody even knows what this is. There's no, like, anybody's talking about this except quantum people that are talking about interdimensional reality and wherever. Right, right. Um, Anyway, the big thing here is that this has been coming on for a while. This is nothing that just happened. You know, years ago in the early 90s, I was actually on Jalela Starr's website. Mm-hmm. The Nibiru Council. That's what it's called. And I don't even know if the website's up anymore, but I stay in touch with her just because she's so connected to the Nibiruans. Uh-huh. She has claimed all these years to be a channel of the Nibiruans. All right? She's never spread fear about them that they're bad, bad people, this, that, all that. But you also know in old tales, like Tolkien and things like that, uh, a lot of these old movies are showing giants, like these giants. And believe it or not, the giants mentioned in the Bible in the film are the Anunnaki. And do you know that in the Arctic, we are unearthing, there's things being unearthed in the Antarctic and the Arctic. And some of it's being heavily protected by government. I believe that's the Antarctic. But in the Arctic right now, we are really looking at a major crack in the Larson D. Ledge. Mm. Uh, not good. It just stretched another 11 miles, and they said that it just broke off. Like well, that's that, that, going in two directions. That brings me to the next question from the chat room. Uh, and I think you just provided a part of an answer there. A uh, person wants to know is there any evidence of gravitational effects from Nibiru or another celestial object that are causing Absolutely. polar shifts and rise in volcanic and geological activity? And I think you just said there was that crack. All right. This, yeah. This is causing, you know, we've done a lot of damage ourselves. There's mm. such a thing as there's such a thing as crustal displacement. Right. We have taken atomic weight from inside the Earth and placed it on the surface. That's why we're getting sinkholes. Ah, That's a fact. Okay. Right. There's nothing under there holding up the Earth, holding up the weight that we're putting on top. Keep filing on top, but we're taking the resources out of the Earth and putting it on top. Still That's right. Atomic weight. All right. Um, we're, we're boring into the earth. There's all kinds of caves and tunnels. Some are secretive. I won't go into that, but there's also all kinds of underground tunnels and underground railways and underground this, that we've been burrowing underground, the fracking. Don't think this again is not helping the earth's cause. All this mm-hmm. disturbing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything we do to this planet, we do to ourselves. Okay. We are going to pay. The planet will fix itself somehow, but. Yeah, we might be in a little bit of trouble if we don't get really real. And I don't like the word global warming or climate change. That's obvious because of everything that is perturbing our sun and our solar system and our right, planet. Right. Right? But it's been coming on, all right? So the big thing about why I feel the need to talk about this is that the Hopi prophecy that came from the star talk about the return of the red and the blue star machine. Mm-hmm. All right. First of all, this has been heavily photographed around our sun right now. It's right around. It's been hanging around at three o'clock, and it's been coming up around like two and you know two two and a half, not quite one o'clock. But boy, when it hits twelve o'clock and it's at perihelion and it's hanging out right over our sun. So it, it, and that's that's Eastern it, time, right? Uh, other people in different time zones can use their equivalent they, time. I'm, right. I'm not good at that. That's not my area. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's okay. No, I'm just saying that, you know, if someone, if someone they're talking in, in about, they're talking about a nemesis is actually directly at 12 o'clock over our sun, which okay. makes it perihelion. Now, what happens at that point is that it's already beginning. All right. This is nemesis, the sun, where these planets rotate around. It's known as a binary star system. Um, it comes around every 3,600 years. We don't see it. We don't detect it. Several people have known that it's there. Matter of fact, all of these very large planets, we know there's some disturbance beyond Pluto. We haven't discovered it yet. Well, that's what we're being told, but we're about to see it with a naked eye. 
Yeah. We're going to be able to see Nibiru in the sky between September and November. Wow. We're going to see it see the size of the moon, the way it's going to look up there. All right? Well, now, the thing about it is, Nibiru is one of the larger planets. All right? There's major and minor planets involved here. Some of them are pretty small. Mm-hmm. They don't seem to create much of a threat. But there are a few of them. All right? Nibiru, Arboda. There is... Um, at two, and then there is Yuri. Um, and let me just put my glasses on. I don't want to miss anything here. I have a list of these somewhere. I've got notes everywhere. Give me a minute here. Well, now, while you're getting your notes together, uh, I'm going to uh, seed you with this question. Uh, Libertas wants to know if you can tell us anything about what is really going on in or under Antarctica. So, well, yeah. I do believe that we are finding giants under there, which they are unearthing, and that's been coming out on Facebook even, right? Yeah, yeah. There's also something about something they discovered there, some giant disc. There was a Pier- whole was lot there of a pyramid in that area. I think it was like a year or more ago. Everybody rushed to that area. It was all totally kept secret. Yeah. But there was a guy that like lives up in that area that saw all this motion. He's I guess he lives somewhere around there or whatever. I, I can't remember. Some of the stuff just eludes me. Yeah. But I feel it was last week or anything. This was like at least a year ago, I remember, um, this story where some kind of thing that first came out as some crash disc or whatever. I don't know if it was crashed. I think it maybe melted and was unearthed. Yeah. You know, you know they're not letting people know things. They Ju- totally oh, yeah. Off the floor, yeah, it was the pyramid. It, it was like, I think what was I that? Think Did you hear about the pyramid? I thought yeah. they found a pyramid there. I and that's why the astronaut went. No. That's why that whole group went. Uh, Curry and uh, the astronaut. What was which astronaut? Alden? Buzz Aldrin? Yeah. They Buzz all went Aldrin. down there. To check it out, right? Yeah, I think so. But there was no news reports on it. Like, I mean, there were oh, news right. reports yeah. that they went. But there was no discussion as to what they saw or why they went. Which no, is we, we really no, have well, no, I'm not going to talk about that. So. No, of course not. So we don't know anything. But, yeah, I'm getting the feeling there's, there's a pyramid, there's, there's a base, maybe an old alien base and alien bodies. Mm. Like they just froze, like over time. They have some bodies. They're, on, they're uncovering, it seems to be, that they're finding these giants that are between like I've heard up to 12 and 13 feet. Wow. Yeah. They're big, and these, yeah. Do you believe these are the Nephilim? That the Nephilim are related to Nerebu or Nibiru? What did you say, honey? I'm sorry. I think Bill I wrote that. something. Um, what about the my? Um, what about the Mayan calendar ties to Nibiru, the accuracy of the calendar, and are the Nephilim directly tied to N- Nibiru? Like, the, I'm thinking these people in Antarctica that they're finding are possibly the Nephilim. What do you think? All right, I thought of this before, and I was talking to my son, and I said, I think it's interesting timing that as this system comes through again after 3,600 years, Right. Because of what it's doing to the climate to melt the ice, it's unearthing its own. It's crazy. I think yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. No, Starting it's... to show themselves now that the family's coming back around again. Just so do you think, there, Pam, do you think there's going to actually be di- disclosure because they can't hide it anymore? It's there? Aaron, it's not even just about alien disclosure, UFO disclosure. At this point, it's so much more than that. At this point... You know, there's a threat to this planet. It depends where you live, all right, because there are certain areas that could be a major target um, for things called cosmic lightning. And, um, you know, they're, they're like lightning. They're, they're called sprites. And, you know, there are people that, you know, from research believe that that's how the Grand Canyon truly uh, may have gotten really created. It's not about water erosion. That's been researched and no huh. such deal not to do that level of uh, erosion. And so they believe that that was a kill shot area for what they call cosmic lightning during the last hmm. 3,063 years. That may have been an area that got hit. 
again, the yeah, research. When, yeah, when, when you think about it, research. when you think about it, how could a river cut the Grand Canyon? I mean, it's huge. You know, how many centuries would that take or millennia? Wow. Yeah. All right. So I want to go back to the Hopi prophecy because they okay. spoke of the blue and the red star Kachina, the return. All right. So the red and the blue star Kachina are one in the same. All right. And I'm going to explain that. It is right now a blue star Kachina. It has a blue halo around it that's being photographed. The best time to photograph this stuff is at sunrise and at sunset. Uh, don't try to capture it any other time. It's just not going to work out that good, all right? You need a digital camera, but not a phone. You, if you have a good good digital camera, it's not like a Nikon or a Canon, none of those other things. They specifically talk about really good digital cameras with gamma and infrared filters. And by golly, at sunrise and sunset, pretty much anybody can capture it, especially if you're in the right area of the world where most people are seeming to see it and take note of things and are doing that. Now, I posted something on my wall late, well, mid, I think it was July or August last summer, and it was a client of mine, but she's become friendly. I've known her for years. And she was just down at Ferry Beach State Park or Pine Point in, in Scarborough, Maine here, uh -huh. and she took a picture of a really pretty sunset. And by golly, there's a little smaller second little sun rising right next to it. It's so obvious. Mm, right here yeah. in me. And that was a year ago. Summer. I have the picture on my wall. I have other pictures. A lot of this stuff has gone through heavy analysis. Remember, when you use gamma filters, you tune out clouds, lens flare, all that stuff, all those aberrations and anomalies get out of the way and show you what's really there behind it. And these people have the right equipment that they are capturing what's going on. And you know that picture I sent you. You can yes. see all the plants. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. That's an interesting shot, all right? And there are some people that have all this. And Ricky Bartlett is one of them. And Bobby Allen does a lot of work with this. Greg, Michael Dobbs, there's a lot of people that follow this regularly and have for a long time. Um, and they have the information. All right, so we are at the Blue Star Kachina right now. And what happens is as it starts to come up over the sun into perihelion, it's going to act like that amusement park ride, the whip, that we, if anybody remembers that from Playland. Oh, yeah. You go, scary. go around, you wait, 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 and all of a sudden, zoom, you get whipped around the corner. All right, that's about to happen with Nemesis. Right. All right, that's brown dwarf star that is running this planet. And so when it comes up over into perihelion, it's going to start to accelerate. Once it hits perihelion, we are definitely going to feel that. All right? And then it moves away from perihelion um, and then starts to move and move and move further and further away from the sun. Um, of course, all these other planets are moving at the same time, doing their thing around us and the sun and the whole thing. Damn, how, how are we going to, how are we going to feel it? Is it going to be something like uh, physical with the earth or is this, uh, you know, something, uh, on a different well, level? You know, they're saying it's not really an evacuation level event. They're saying for some people, yeah, it depends on kind of where you are in a mm -hmm. way. Nobody knows that really. No, there's no... You know, there's coordinates and there's all that as people follow it. And again, it's early. We've got, they're saying, till between September and November. So we're still following all of this as it reaches perihelion. Mm -hmm. right? It's coming up around the 2 o'clock point. And when it hits midnight, when it hits 12, it's going to be a perihelion. And it's going to whip and accelerate to that point. Now, this is the interesting thing. The true prophecy says, that the minute it hits per perihelion and it starts to move away, go in the other direction, it's now at perihelion, which means it's moving the furthest away from the sun and it's going to go wherever it goes. And beyond that, the planets are moving too. So at this point, once it rips over um, and hits perihelion, it's, it's really picking up speed now. Now it's picking up even more acceleration and it's going to rip over the other side of the sun. So we got this over the sun beginning, over the top, and then over the other side. 
it's, you know, it's kind of like maybe the eye of the hurricane and then we get the second hit. Mm. And then it becomes, then it becomes the red star Kachina. Then it becomes the red star. And that's how it's, right. that's, so that's because it's moving away. Not only that. Yes. It has to do with the placement and the light waves and all of that. That's true. At the same time though, it's interesting that we use the blue, which is the cold and the red, which is the hot. All right. Because it's not really a threat as it's the blue star. It's not, it's a hard binger of the red star that's coming once it hits perihelion. It's like a warning, but it doesn't do any damage until it literally hits perihelion and becomes the red star. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's where the red star, blue star comes from. It's the same entity, but it's switching from blue, which is kind of peaceful and bringing in that other situation. Right. So the, the <clears throat> problem is reaching perihelion and then the other side is perihelion. It's not going up to perihelion. You know, things are happening, sure. Right? They may accelerate in happening. Mm -hmm. But if anything is going to really, like, suddenly happen, like a major tsunami or anything like that, then it's going to hit perihelion hits or just after perihelion as it turns red, which is not so nice. It's not as nice as the blue. (laughs) Yeah. Different energy. I, I don't. I don't do this to bring fear. I feel like it's important for people to understand. You know, there's an element of denial, but then there's an element of um, people that want to know. And I feel like for the people that would like to know, mm-hmm. you know, they'll um, maybe they would like to know if there was such a thing happening. Maybe they would like. And there's well, nobody they, around. Nothing they're connected to to bring this information to them. Yeah. So either way. Either way. Put it out. Either way, it's good that the information gets out there. Um, you know, people can do with it what they wish, but at least it's getting disseminated amongst, uh, you know, people who are listening and everything. All right. So now I want to answer that caller or that person in the chat room. Pretty much, this is going to, like, rip at the Earth's crust and play with the core of the Earth, which is basically magnetic, connected to our sun's magnetic. Um, the sun is expected to get very perturbed up and coming. Um, it, again, we might be looking at what they call cosmic lightning or solar strike. Um, and that could be very damaging. <laughs> and again, that's more like directed or it's directed, or it may not even be earth directed. If it's not earth directed, we're good. It could happen. Mm. All right. But if it doesn't, then it's going to be almost like a micro burst. If anybody knows what that is, um, oh, yeah, yeah, anybody know yeah. what micro burst is? It basically I, I, comes like a lightning strike out of the sky, and it isolates one area and just takes out every single thing in that area. Right wow. there, Boom. it doesn't travel; it just hits what it hits, and it, everything that's there is like wiped. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, it's one of those only cosmic. So, picture that. It's like e. Um, it's coming from higher than our own atmosphere. Like this is coming from a more cosmic source. So, all right. Interesting. And, Interesting. So the crust of the earth is already unstable and all it needs is a little annoyance and a little more and a little more. And so we're talking about a possible pole shift. You know, people don't know what that means. They think the earth is going to shift a hundred, uh, 360 degrees. That's not so. I don't believe that's so at all. Um, we've already shifted a little bit here, a little bit there. We are not at magnetic north where we used to be. All right. During the last, major earthquakes and tsunamis since 2006. Um, we've already had some wobbles and pull shifts and short level eight degrees here, five degrees there. All right. And I believe, and again, I haven't checked lately to see if we've even had another degree or anything shift. The last that I checked, I believe that we were at like a 44 degree uh-huh. or closing to something like that. Um, over since like 2006, which is 10 or 11, whatever years. You know, there are volcanoes that are showing activity after none. Mm-hmm. You know, the one that went off in Iceland a couple of years ago, Iceland, that thing was bad. That thing was like, wow, that blew big time. Um, and there's just a lot of people concerned about Yellowstone and, you know, the calderas over there and right. how that's going to trigger, you know, underground earthquakes that stretch all the way to the West Coast even. Um you know, Mount Rainier is a sleeping giant, but what might this all do to that? How do we know? We don't really yeah. know. Oh, yeah. I'll all be right? there next week. <laughs> yeah. 
Mount okay. Rainier, I'll be hiking Mount Rainier next week. Should I not? <laughs> we get a match after there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Lorraine, uh, uh, Lorraine wants to know, and, and I do too, because I, she just uh, reminded me of something that's happening. That, you know, they're sending that solar probe. What are they doing with that, and what are we going to learn, do you think, from it? They're sending a solar probe? Y- yeah. Yeah, it's a... It's a... It's a... Spe- it's a whole project? Well, it's like a satellite that they're pushing toward the sun. It... Res- it, it uh, you know, can resist a lot of heat, but it's doing some scientific stuff, learning a little bit about the sun. But you know, maybe uh, they're taking pictures of yeah. The funny that the funny that you're system. talking. Yeah, funny that you're talking about this now, and we have this solar probe that's about to go up. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, and so there's still more information about this. All right. Yeah. And I want to make sure I at least cover what I need to before your next guest comes on. I don't know how much long I have. The email uh-huh. time flow. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> and so oh. I, I mentioned. Um, hang on a second. Uh, I want to mention Bob Dean, Project Camelot. He's done a oh, lot okay. of remote things for the government, and he's legitimate. Uh, a lot of stuff he has said has happened. And so you know, he claims this is what he said. Um, when it, from perihelion. From perihelion to the ecliptic phase, all right, from that point, point, he calls that a kill shot. Now, remember, that's what we talked about, the red star kicking in, all right? When it hits perihelion and it's traveling toward the ecliptic phase, that's what he calls the kill shot, mm-hmm. all right? And that's what cosmic lightning, the solar strike. And he is relating that to a possible past hit years ago, 3,600, in the Grand Canyon. That's what his remote, you know, that's what he basically would, would compare that to. He's saying okay. something of that nature. All right. Now, it depends if it's Earth directed, all right? Because if it is, it's still going to be what he claims is only a regional cataclysm. Mm. It won't be an extinction level event, but wherever you are, you have to be away from certain things that are definitely not in your favor, like water, like the coastline. You know, they're talking about going at least 100 miles inland and also up in sea level elevation. Mm. No matter if the waters won't go that far in or up. So you got to be thinking about such things, all right? Maybe you know a friend that lives somewhere around a safe zone. Uh, maybe you have family over there. You certainly want to maybe be visiting in the fall, and you might want to stay a few months. <laughs> Tell them, sorry, don't mean to understay my, overstay my welcome, but I'm going to be here a few months, just saying. <laughs> I'm joking, but you know what I mean. I know so, you are. <laughs> people, look at people that they do have in other places that are safe. Yeah? And we all need to start pulling resources and, and trying to get past this because there's only a short amount of time that this is going to, you know, really be in a, in a problem. Now, they claim when Nibiru and some of the other larger planets start crossing in front of the sun and Earth's orbit, you talk about the three days of darkness, it might be more than three. All right? And they're talking about, I'm talking spark, pitch, black, dark. Mm. Now, in that energy that we're going to be under, who knows how that may affect our cars, our electricity, our magnetics, anything temporarily. We may not be able to go anywhere or do much of anything. That's why in the end, it may be impossible to move around or gather certain things that you may need um, because fire... I don't know, unless the atmosphere changes, too. Fire mm-hmm. may be our only the light. I don't know. They're even saying batteries might not work. Wow. Now, hey, how do I know? How do we know? How do we know it's who we're there? You know, these are scientists that figure this out because of conditions that nothing that we're used to working when it gets dark may work for us, not even a generator. <laughs> so, well, I guess you know. we'll have to build... A uh, million Faraday cages to put things in, so that, so that you know the uh, what if it's an electromagnetic pulse or whatever. Yeah, uh, Faraday, Faraday cages is where you, right. That's where you put yeah. uh, electronic devices uh, to save them from being toasted when we hit, we're hit with an EMP, electromagnetic pulse. And again, you know that could be like supplied by us or Russia on a man level, but the sun could do such a thing. It could fry the grid out if we have an Earth-directed major 
like C or X class solar flare or two in a row with a major coronal hole. Um, if it's earth directed, you know, that alone, that alone could do us in right there. That's a known fact. <laughs> so, Hey, I'm not trying to scare people, but I'm not afraid to die anyway. Cause there's no such thing in my reality. No such thing. Yeah. Energy yeah. can't be destroyed. Energy can't be destroyed. It can only be changed, altered, transmuted. So we're just going somewhere else there. You know, we're not really gone. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now you really said you, you said it earlier, and uh, you know, and this was uh, this is another question that has come from the chat room, and I think you answered it earlier. Uh, you you had said that uh, there's no place to run, no place to hide, and we have a question here: How do we outrun or hide from uh, the pollution, like from the XL pipeline or or whatever uh, whatever happens? Is there any safe place on the globe that people might be able to gather? All right. Well, the first thing that you need to be clever about is what kind of conditions might occur. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're dealing with volcanic stuff, you're dealing with sulfur, I think. You're dealing with, you know, ash and chemicals in the air, so it's going to be respiratory. All right. So anything that you can do to help yourself on a respiratory level with remedies or masks, um, anything to kind of filter out breathing that stuff in, um, you know, people talk about, you know, you might have to like tape up your windows and doors and just not let anything in for a little bit of time. If there's a lot of dust settling, because even if you're nowhere near it, it's going to be up there and it's coming down and it could travel. It could go anywhere. All right. Mm -hmm. And again, block out the sun. It could be an element of darkness just from that. And this is nothing new. There's nothing to be afraid of. We're still here since the last one. We're still here and there's billions of us. <laughs> so there will remain people, all right? And again, if you're in a danger zone, the only thing you can do is try to find a location, a person, uh, a campground, something where you can park yourself for a time, um, figure it out. You know, everybody can do that, but it's also important to share information and share resources, share property if you have the right property. Not with just anybody, but maybe with people that you care about. Maybe you need to let them know. You might want to be visiting me over at the ranch there, you know, way up in wherever, you know, up north or wherever. There are definitely parts of Canada that are definitely safe. You know, there's no water around, like major water. Um, it's pretty landlocked between us and them up in the north and midwest, you know, like the mid-northwest. Um, or, or where you call that, like the, the middle of the country, direct middle of our country. What is that, like Montana and, and north of Montana, I mean, uh, east of Montana area. You know, we are dealing with also the New Madrid Fault, all right? And that's right. supposed to get a lot more active. We just had a, a low level, like three, three or not even a four point, but a three, low three level one in Ohio last week, a couple of days ago. That's mm. unusual, I think, you know? It is. So that's part of the New Madrid Fault. So if that's waking up a little bit and getting a little annoyed by uh, everything going around the sun. Remember, anything that annoys the sun is going to pull at the magnetic core of our Earth. It's connected. Right, right. They are. That's that's why we're in orbit. Um, what, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, um, so people who think that by going underground they're going to be safe, I think they have another thing coming, right? Well, if we have any kind of pole shift, even if it's a 190 degree, which it won't be, you've got to minus the degrees we've already shifted. So if anything, I think we're going to shift the rest of the way to 190 or even, yeah, I, I think that halfway, you know, halfway, that's what I see. We're not yeah. going to go up all the way around the other side. I don't feel that. I feel like we're going to go halfway um, to the 190 angle and yet we've already shifted so minus however many degrees we're at right now, right? Right. So I, I really believe that little by little by little by little, that as this has been approaching, it's been slowly but surely pole shifting. And then it's going to just suddenly quicken as it goes over perihelion and has that whip effect going down the other side as the red to mm -hmm. then, then it's going into aphelion, which is starting to move now to the furthest distance from the sun. And it's going to ultimately lay. Guess where it's going? All right? And I'm talking um, Nemesis now, the second spot. Okay. It is literally going to end up resting between Mars and Jupiter. That is the coordinates of where it, it is supposed to rest. 
And then Nibiru starts to cause the pole shift. Nibiru is the thing, all right? It's big enough to do so. That little dwarf star is not. It's enough to aggravate the sun and, and cause like a domino effect with the rest of the planets moving around everything. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. All right, so the, the major, the major planets that we have to think of are Nemesis, uh, the sun. That's like a problem in itself. But the bigger problem is Helion, Arboda, and Nibiru. Those are the three larger out of all the planets. Mm-hmm. And then there is, you know, they get a little smaller, but I believe Yuri and Atu, they could be a little smaller, or they're somewhere in the larger range. I just know there's several larger planets, and then there's two smaller ones. Yeah. And one of them, I don't even know the real name of. I can't make it out. It's listed on a post, and I've tried to ask the guy what it says. I haven't heard back from him. And I think it starts with an S, and it's a very small planet, but so small that when you tap it and try to bring it up to see it, it blows out so bad, I can't make it out. Mm. So, um, I, there's another really small one um, that's out there, too. There's a few smaller ones. So, you know, the Sumerians talk about Nemesis, or Nibiru, actually, Nibiru, as the planet of crossing. That's what Nibiru means. Right? It's a Sumerian term for the planet of crossing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's going to cross between Earth and Venus, which is going to cause the days of dark. It is going to be extremely pitch black, and it's going to totally blot out the sun. Um, so, and that is the darkness that, again, has been prophesized because it's happened before. It's, it's nothing that they've been saying is coming in the future, this big crash street. They know about it because it's already happened over and over mm-hmm. through Earth, Earth's life. Um, so. Now, um, you're, you're, you're talking about the Revelation darkness, right? Three days of darkness. Again, it's in the Bible, but okay. in, in, in other places, you know, if they speak of this, this is mm-hmm. part of ancient text, ancient history. Um, it's an inevitable thing when a giant uh, planet like Nibiru crosses between the Earth and the Sun. That yeah, now we're not going to get any light. That makes a little sense on a physical level. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about travel advice this summer? <laughs> we got people wanting. I want to know because I'm traveling. Um, is most of this no. going to happen in September? All right. So Ed Gaines, who is the remote viewer, you know, he claimed last year, I believe it was last year during the speech, he said, or maybe he said it earlier. I think there may, might have been a time in 2008 when he did a speech. Anyway, he's been following this a long time. And basically he said, 2017, take it to the bank. Mm. That's his Take it to the bank. We're not getting that here. And if you look at the um, Mayan calendar and the Gregorian calendar, they claim there is like a four-year difference. It's off. It's not accurate. They're not accurate. Mm. So if you go back to 2012, when we thought the prophecies were going to happen, you count four years and you're dealing with 2016. Ah, All right? And we're all six months out of 2016, and this has been happening. Um, So... It's accelerating now, right? We're, so everything's accelerating up and coming. And we're not too far from perihelion. And I believe that as it comes overhead above our sun, um, we're going to be able to see certain things in the sky with the naked eye. We're going to be able to view certain things that are out there. Interesting. That's what they're saying. Yeah. And that's so, when yeah. I think that they're saying November, we're going to see things in the sky that look like a second moon. It's the size of the moon or a little bit larger. Um, and that's the prediction. Again, I can't promise people that this is what's going to happen. All right, right. right. It's, we really, really happens. don't know exactly so yeah. when this is all going to, if it yeah. does happen. We're not. So really- we're uh, we're safe to travel for the summer, then, right? Yeah, you're safe to travel for the summer, but right. you know, don't get comfortable and don't sit on your laurels and get complacent, and don't be in fear. All right, don't live in fight or flight. Don't live in fear. It's calm. The calmer we are, and we've been prepared for that as light workers. We've been prepared for this. For this, we have. That is Julia's ascension, because I have my own kind of take on some of that. Um, one of the only places to be safe is off planet. All right, and there's been mm, all kinds wow. of keys surrounding this planet and taking people, and so they can take us up anytime they want, especially their own. That. 
<laughs> that would be great. Especially if they're on. Anybody they're doing hybrid projects with that are ongoing through generations, they don't want to lose what they have going, believe me. <laughs> Incredible. That would be nice if they took us they off. I feel they'll protect what they want. I really believe that. I know that inside of myself, and that's to mean I'm going to be saved. Hey, I'm old. I don't need to be saved. But save my damn children. <laughs> save them, and I'm good. Save them. You know? But there also, could be, there also could be a lot of intervention from the Galactics as far as, and I think there has before, like with the uh, asteroids that have come. Uh, I, I believe the two that exploded above ground in Russia were, people claim to have seen saucers emit something um, where it blew up in the air instead of hitting the ground. You know, I think there's a lot of protection out there. You know what we have for technology. We have particle beam weapons. We have scalar right. weapons, direct satellite directed weapons, you know, to Earth. And, yeah, don't you think they don't have better than that? So right, right. And take whatever they want. They can do a lot of things that we can't even imagine. Right. Mm, yeah. Because I also heard from a lot of people that do channel and uh, um, that it does, you know, a lot of these prophecies and these things are warnings. You know, the timelines are constantly changing as more and more people are becoming awake and aware and, and service to others. So I think if we put our focus towards that, I mean, of course, you should always have your three month supply of water and whatever, just in case. But, you know, you know, just kind of focus on you know moving forward and helping others and um if you're that's in where, fear you're going to get fear you know that's, that's what, I what it is for well, all guys, the people i i i hate I to step i I'll, hate to step in that's, all right I hate to step in, but it's time uh, for us to go to a break. And if you want to, we'll uh, after up. after I do this uh, this information sharing with everyone, we can pick that up on the other side, uh, Julia. If you wanted to get sure. into the ascension parts, okay? Sure. All right. Everybody out there who is listening, I appreciate you listening tonight. You are listening to the Starborn Connection Radio Show, and it's only heard on KGRA. Alternative Talk Radio, your connection to the multiverse and beyond. We'll see you on the other side. I'm getting older and noticing that my body just doesn't work as well as it used to. So I like to keep fit as possible by hitting the gym a few times a week. Recently, I started having a nagging bicep pain and it got so bad I couldn't even lift the weights. When I was complaining about it to a friend, he told me about Angioprim. He said chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in veins and arteries that may cause blockages. You know, after just one week of taking Angioprim, the pain was gone and now I'm back in the gym full strength. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. So to learn more, go to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or talk to a trained consultant. Call angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. You'll feel better with more energy. Call 877-882-7221. Or go to the website, angioprim.com. For the thousands of wounded warriors returning from battle, Wounded Warrior Project has developed the Warriors to Work program, a career counseling service that helps wounded warriors translate their military experience to a civilian job. These extraordinary men and women bring more than just teamwork and inspiration to the workplace. They bring proven world-class job skills. And to ensure proper placement, Wounded Warrior Project works with employers to find just the right job fit. Talented, skilled, and eager to get back to work, you have the opportunity to hire a seasoned veteran. Contact Wounded Warrior Project at findwwp.org. Welcome home, the brave. Hey there, quick question for you. Would you be okay with more energy, more endurance? Thicker, healthier hair, a better mood, reduced appearance of wrinkles, improved sleep, improved blood pressure and cholesterol profiles, improved vision, improved memory. Okay then, 
Well, now, have you heard of Nature's Youth RSF? It's from the anti-aging experts at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. See, at Nature's Youth, they understand exactly what it means to provide top quality health products. And Nature's Youth customers not only improve their health, they know they're also providing their body with the right nourishment to maintain that peak performance and fight the aging process. If health, wellness, and nutrition are what you desire, choose Nature's Youth RSF. I did. You see, you're going to get older. It's just up to you how you feel when you get there. Get started today. Nature's Youth RSF. Simple to use, simple to order. Go to naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. KGRARadio.com is your conference connection station. Welcome back to uh, the second hour here tonight. Um, you're listening to the Starborn Connection radio show on KGRA Alternative Talk Radio, your connection to the universe and everything else. It's a great place and it's going to get better. Anyway, what I want to talk about now is uh, some information that uh, Ilona Podraska sent me this week and it concerns the uh, – The event that took place about two weeks ago when uh, her father and Ivana and Ilona were driving home in their car to their home city of Telk in uh, Czechoslovakia. Driving through the woods, I'll recap it for you, driving through the woods, um, uh, Ilona and Ivana kind of noticed something off on the right, a flash movement, and all of a sudden – Their car is impacted by something that sets it aflame. And uh, the car uh, was burnt to its frame. Uh, Just an incredible burn. Uh, But everybody's safe. Everybody's out of the car. And so this week, uh, they asked their contact, the Iba Ali, the uh, extraterrestrial biological entity. He likes to go by that, E-B-E, Ali. Ask some questions about it. So uh, I'm going to let you guys in on this information. Now, uh, Oli greeted them in the usual way with an alleluia, and immediately Oli went into the reading. Oli spoke of a signal they were picking up, telling their people that there was evil spreading on the earth and that anyone whom they encounter, and I'm assuming strangers or recent acquaintances, should be challenged or tested to determine their intentions. And that's a good idea anyway. But, uh, you know, it, it really is smart to make sure that somebody's on the up and up if they're, you know, trying to talk to you or whatever. He says the universe is ready for big events and that soon there will be a turning point and that Oli is in touch with the thoughts of Ilona and, and Ivana. Oli continues stating that their ships and other ships will soon be seen and that this is an inevitable event. Oli also warned the two to protect themselves and that Ivana is the key to their ability. And I'm talking about their ability, meaning uh, Oli and all of the uh, his fellow aliens out there. Uh, Ivana is the key to their ability to navigate around the planet. <clears throat> So they're very well connected to Ivana. Ilona asked Oli, EBE, why did our car burn? And he answered, and this is kind of like a parent talking to their children, really. We have warned you a long time ago, you cannot give all of the information to people. Uh, uh, Oli continued, yes, this is how it happened. Your technology goes beyond our technology, and uh, the meaning is unclear there. I I, I don't know exactly what that meant. Uh, But he continues saying, we do not like cars. Cars pollute the atmosphere, and they negatively affect our ships as well. It kills the vacuum, and I'm not sure exactly what that means either, but it's very fascinating. Uh, Oli continued at this point to get down to what they were attacked uh, or why they were attacked in such a lethal way. He said the event with the car happened the way it did. They were told not to worry because they were not going to lose their body structure, meaning they weren't going to die yet. 
And so uh, EBE continued saying, both of you still have a task to do on earth. So it is not your time yet. It's a plan of surplus information. Another question mark. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, And yes, you are being watched not by us, but by others. The one who did this knows the content of your computer. Now, that is interesting. Oh, that's scary. That's very interesting. Yeah. Now, he goes on to explain things further, uh, and he talks about how Oli and his cohorts work through Ivana. Uh, So he says, you know, we see everything by Ivana's eyes, and we can see what is going on. We cannot influence everything, but we know that nothing can happen to you too. We hold a protective hand over your lives, but we cannot influence your intentions and the content of information that could be kept secret. So basically he's saying, look, we can protect you, but but you have to learn how to you know, release information that's not going to make other people uh, look upon you as uh, fodder for uh, assassination. Uh, <clears throat> and he once again, he talks uh, about they're not interested in our cars, uh, Probably meaning they will not prevent cars from getting blown up. I don't know. Uh, but uh, they have different technology. And, and Oli says, we know you are being followed and watched, but do not worry. We watch over you and protect you. So uh, Oli is then asked, who is to blame for the car catching fire? And Oli says, it was a human structure, meaning a person. He continues, You do not know people around you confidently enough that they should know everything about you. This person was a tall man acting from an invisible angle. We know more, but we are not permitted to say more for your own protection. Otherwise, this human structure who is to blame would be able to read directly from your computer, Ilona. You are in touch with that human structure. He is not far but he is not near either. And, and I think that's implying that, uh, you know, he's not far because he's connected to their computer, uh, but he's not near because he's, you know, somewhere else, maybe even out of the country. Mm. Um, it is equally dangerous for you to and us to reveal the person's identity. Your car was fully functional and there was nothing wrong with it. The danger came from an invisible angle while you were driving. Uh, meaning he was well hidden. This person works within government structures. They know every step you take. We cannot stop them from doing things, but do not worry. You will not lose your life. You have us. You need to be careful, however, and you cannot reveal all of the info pertaining to us. Now, uh, it gets a little bit lighter. They begin uh, to explain a little bit about themselves and some consequences uh, from revealing too much. Oli continues, look, we are neither spirits, ghosts, or people, or puppets that can be controlled. We are not robots either. We have our rules, i.e. laws. It's not like you can just ask any information you want to be communicated to you. It does not work that way. You must be able to distinguish which info can hurt you and which cannot. Otherwise, we might just turn our channel completely off in case it gets too dangerous. But if we do this, you will lose your protection. Yes, the feeling you have about something being installed in your house is true. There are invisible connection systems, streams installed in your home, uh, telling them that there's bugs, cameras, sound, wireless, common stuff today, folks. Oli continues with a little bit more detail, and it's it's pretty chilling. He says that they have been secretly set there for about five years now. And I'm talking about the the wireless monitors and stuff. Some people are evil and controlled, manipulated by a stronger power. When people are tuned in, meaning connected to their contact or remotely controlled, they can kill like robots. Now, 
it sounds as if Oli is describing mind control. So, you know, that's uh, and that gets pretty interesting. And Oli is saying that, yes, e- people who are in touch, they can turn them into robots and, and they can kill, which is scary. He says robots are evolving in Area 51. They're, they're developing more and more, uh, I guess, high-tech robots. They will serve to the rest of human civilization. There are many disasters and catastrophes happening in the world, and they are artificially evoked on purpose. The conversion of the cosmos is unique, but part of history remains untouchable and true. People's evolution has taken a wrong direction, and we are sorry. The universe is changing, and people feel it. A major part has to uh, disappear due to government processes. We are benevolent. We know that people in America are not saying positive things about us. They can hurt you. They are all one branch or brand. Pertaining to what happened to your car... Such dangers and planned attacks happen very quickly. You will not be able to notice them. Those people are trained especially for this. The one who did this is a perfectly trained individual for these kinds of dangerous actions. Now, all he goes on to talk about unrelated stuff, but uh, that's basically the message um, that Ivana and... uh, Ilona got from Oli about a week ago. Uh, pretty fascinating stuff. And um, I don't know if any of you guys in the chat room have any questions that you would like me to pass on to these guys, please. Uh, you can post them there or you can you can send them to my Facebook page and I will copy them down. And I will uh, see if Ilona will be able to um, ask those questions. Um I do want to thank Julia Sellers, an individual who I'm going to have on the show in the future. She did the translation from Czech to English, and it it was much easier for me to go through and kind of take out the stuff that pertains to what we're talking about. Um, And uh, I'm not sure exactly when she will be on, but we will have her on. Uh, She is a fascinating lady uh, in and of herself. So... Unbelievable stuff, right, guys? I'm telling you. Uh, I, I have a question, Michael. Sure. And this is Pam. When when she is speaking with the ET, the UB, yes, and he claims uh, uh, Ollie or Oli, whatever. O L I E. Yeah, that's his name. Okay. When he claims that you kind of have to watch what you say and watch what you share. Um, you know, we, we obviously know that because we're, we're giving out information, we're offering it over, you know, we're, in a way, the way that they describe that, it's almost like we're creating our own target or whatever. You know, and you got to draw the line somewhere with that as to how important is this information for everybody else to where some people are going to maybe end up being some kind of like, uh, I hate to say sacrificial lamb, but I don't know why certain people are chosen over others to be really harassed. Because yeah, there's plenty I, of people. I have an you know, idea why. So things, and some people are being really harassed and some people not so, you know? Yeah, well, they they, uh, they have uh, not been aware of any harassment until, you know, just within the past year or so. Uh, and I think it's because of the information that they are getting. And, and I think uh, their contact, Oli, is telling them, you know, you have to you have to be careful. You know, if you're saying something, you have to use your own judgment. If you're talking about something that uh, we've told you. Uh, if it starts to feel uncomfortable, listen to that because, uh, you know, that's, you know, your insides telling you, hey, cool it. You don't need to talk about everything. And indeed, uh, you know, people don't need to know some of the stuff. Yeah, something, yeah I agree. Yeah. Hmm. But, uh, you know, it's it just goes to show you that, uh, you know, a couple of simple, uh, nice, lovely girls – 
from the country in Czechoslovakia who have a contact. By the way, it's uh, through channeling that, that, that they talk to Oli. Um, even those two uh, ladies can be tortured and listened to and, uh, you know, uh, spied upon because of their contact and the information they're getting. So we all have to be careful. I think that's what I would say. If if you're into this and if you're uh, dealing with information, please take it easy. Think about what you're going to talk about or release and, uh, you know, be careful, I think. <sighs> that's something. Well, I talked about earlier that that's become science fact because no matter what they tell us, people are going to be looking and questioning. And maybe that's what Ali was talking about, about upcoming future. Not oh, future. yeah, yeah. That uh, real similarities to what you were saying. That's the, you know, and I was thinking about that when you were talking earlier. I, I was saying to myself, oh, wow, wait till I wait till I read this stuff, you know. Uh, it, it, it meant a lot of it matches up. So, hmm. And I think with all the things that are being revealed, like what our government's doing behind the scenes, maybe the harassment has stopped because it has to stop if everything's revealed because there's no secrets anymore. Well, yeah, there's no more. Game. Everybody knows about the bases and the experiments and all that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah, I mean, there's no more games to play once once everybody yeah. knows what's going on, and um, it it just goes to show you that there's still a lot of stuff that we don't know about that that even uh, Oli and his uh, cohorts up there on the ships, uh, which are going to be seen soon. I I'm looking forward to that. Um, are holding back. Well. If you don't have anything else to say about that, guys, we're going to move on to uh, Julia. You need some time. You need some time. You I need had, some time. Yeah. You, well, you haven't had any a chance to really talk about, uh, you know, your transition, and I, I think it's something that people need to hear. Uh, well, your progress. Well, I have talked about my transition, but I think what I really want to say is like all the stuff kind of that we're talking about. Uh, the stuff that happened throughout the week. Um, I could talk about a few things that happened this week and how um, my trans, trans, my spiritual transition helped me um, look at it a different way and act a different way so the outcome was awesome when it wouldn't have been. Um, and I think, well, I'll just go into it. So... <laughs> So anyway, so we're talking, we were talking about Nibiru, and we're, Nibiru, I always, I say Nibiru, it's Nibiru, we were talking about that, and, you know, as a radio co-host, I have to watch, I have to be kind of like aware, you know, I, I'm looking for guests constantly, so, you know, I have to watch a lot of videos on the internet, so I get a lot of these conspiracy things, like the whole thing with Corey Good, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I saw his wife on a video that was explaining everything, and you know how we talked about him last week, and David List, the dark journalist, had four videos um, against him, and his wife was, like, doing a video where she was explaining everything, and then dark journalist got back with another person to, def to you know, say, you know, she's she's you know, coming on all the sun saying all these things, you know. So so what we have is we have a lot of all we're gonna have a lot of revelation in the field where we're gonna finally know the truth, like the ones that are making stuff up or I think there's truth in everything, but I think it gets, you know, twisted a little bit. And and of course if if you're talking about um uh people that have had extraterrestrial experience and then they have the mind lab come in. And the mind lab could twist your mind, you know, they could do a doozy on your mind. So um, how do we know that everything we're hearing is true or not true? So anyway, as a radio co-host, I kind of have to listen to all these things. And they can be pretty disturbing because I kind of want to know, like, what is it? And I do meditation every morning. <laughs> And I really came to this conclusion, um, in my meditations, I really get a clear message, and I've been getting it for quite a while. You've got to listen to your own, your own um, uh, intuition. 
and I and to always look at everything everything has a bit of truth and everything has a bit of lie and there are people that you meet or you see at conferences and you, you know they're a hundred percent good they're a hundred percent you know wonderful but there are people that have their ideas and their opinions and it doesn't mean it's right but it's right for them it's they don't they're not lying they believe this stuff but it doesn't mean it's correct so the whole idea of my personal ascension besides you know the service to others that kind of thing the most important thing before you service to others is service to self so you know we want to take care of ourselves and we want to um get to the point where we're pretty confident in you know our spiritual beliefs have changed um let's see what else uh all these systems are changing for us we no longer buy into the whole government thing we're not buying into the news we're not you know we're seeing things from a different angle uh because we want to create a new heaven on earth so we're seeing that the current system doesn't work for us so what i'm learning is to and maybe pam can can uh you know, say something after this, I'd like to hear her opinion, is is that um, with everything that I'm hearing and listening, I have to go with my own intuition. And I'm learning meditations and all kinds of stuff so I can open that part of me where there's a meditation where your heart, uh, you can bring your heart, uh, connect your heart to your brain. And I tried to do that every morning before my meditation because that really opens up my intuitive kind of – and I had this really intense situation. I'm not going to go into it because it's personal. But years ago, years ago, I would have been tearing my hair out and screaming and screaming at this person. And I just heard the information. I went, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And something said, don't get upset. It's probably nothing. It's probably, probably nothing. So I asked my guides, um, guides, you know, what's going on? What's going on? Um, I'm getting this information, but I see something totally different. So what's up? So a day later, the answer came, and it was something totally different. I mean, it was beautiful and wonderful, and it wasn't a bad situation at all. It was just um, a lot of confusion. And a lot of, you know, and too many people getting in the way. You know what I mean? So, but that really changed that, you know, that's how when you have a relationship with someone that really, you know, just my intuition said 10 years ago would be a big deal. But I'm not believing that's really happening now. I think there's more to this information that I'm getting. And then I waited and. So, you know, that transformation of how we deal with other people. Um, so all this information, you know, we're talking about um, near a bill and it can be really scary. So, um, you know, so my take on it is, you know, I, I listen and I watch. I listen to all these things. And I am about to go to the store and get my three-month supply of water and put it in the garage and my soup cans and um but I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, the, uh, I've been getting like you should always have at least two weeks. God forbid there's like a major snow. We did have a major snowstorm with ice and we couldn't get – we had no electricity for a week. So, yeah, it's it's a nasty situation when you're not used to it. So uh, anything – you know, sh- you should be prepared. But I don't want to put my focus on – you know, I'm focusing on my <laughs> heaven on earth. And that's all I can do because if a, night, if a lightning wants to strike my house, it's going to strike my house and I'm gone. But um, I want to live each moment with no fear. So, like, Pam, can you um, – I just want to hear what you, you have to say, you know, your version. Or is it the same? All right, Julia, i got to read something to you that oh, I just okay. pulled out of my drawer because I feel like it's going to resonate to you and okay. maybe others. This used to be on my old website, starseedcentral.com, all right? And it was written by me through automatic typing, writing. Oh, okay. And I was doing a lot of channeling back then, and this was right around 
All right. This was when I moved out of my house, when I channeled this. I remember where I was. And so this was definitely like right before 9-11. I moved out of my house June 1st of 2001. And this came through before September, like not long. I'm talking within a couple of weeks. All right. And so I just want to read this because it's very interesting. And I read fast, but I, I want everybody to take this in. This is old news, but it isn't. It's happening now. This is what I think he was talking about. Mm-hmm. And it relates to what you were talking about. All right. It's called The Order Creating Chaos. Now, that sounds crazy, but The Order Creating Chaos. All right. Mm-hmm. Saint Germain is coming through me and saying greetings. I am Saint Germain. Feeling all stirred up, feeling the winds of change, I say to you, there is a great hurricane of change we're being swept up in, tossed around in. Eventually, when the winds have quieted and the stirring is replaced with silence, stillness, and content, you will most assuredly end up elsewhere, somewhere different from where the strong winds first swept you up. Where would you like to end up, I ask you? As always, you have free choice in this matter. Uh, the divine regions of light and the light workers on earth and in heaven have beautifully co-created a vortex of energy, the order within the chaos, the center of the hurricane, the eye of the storm. They are all seeing, wait, they are the all seeing eye, the calm and the center of the order within the swirling chaos that is all around them that they have created. All right, now this is an interesting thing when it came through me. I'm questioning this. I'm saying, what are you saying? Are you saying that the white workers that woke up are, like, done with the situation? So in order to make the change, we're looking at a major amount of temporary chaos, but we're still holding the energy in the center. We're holding the energy, all right? But if you know a storm does not create at all if it wasn't for the eye, the nucleus, all right? And they go on. I'm not done. All right, now I say to you, before you say to me, how could those of the light create this chaos? Listen, dear ones, did you not ask for ascension? Did you not all decree that you shall be in the heart and as one? Did you not ask us to use the violet flame of transmutation, compassion, and purification? I must say that because you have asked for these things, they are being given unto you. For what you ask of us collectively will most assuredly manifest and much quicker these days, have you not noticed? All right, a storm is currently raging around the center of pure calm. For a moment, create a visual, clear space for this image in your mind. This central point, this nucleus, is the center of the creation of the storm around it. I am sure that you must all see the beauty in this, the perfection of it all, for you see all of the restructuring of matter that is occurring within the outer swirling vortex will bring forth much alteration of things swept up. All is unfolding, unraveling, being shaken, turned inside out, upside down, tossed and flipped, and will eventually emerge from the ride, changed, altered somewhere else. All right, I'm still going. For a time, the storm will, for a time, the storm will gather strength. Then it will reach the point where it begins to weaken. And so it shall. For remember, the eye controls the storm, creates and destroys it, alters it energetically back into that from which it was created. Think on the profundity of this message. We enjoy using symbols and parables to help you see the bigger picture, the grand illusion and the scheme of things. Those in the center of the calm within the all-seeing eye are aware of what is taking place around them. They know it all too well. They have been waiting patiently for this very time, a time they have dreamed of, diligently, passionately believing in, and had trust and faith, and have worked most arduously for, a time they sometimes question, will it ever come? Being told all the while, in divine time, we we do have compassion for you and have watched and comforted you all as you've wept, begged for all of this to come to its climax so that you may come home, home to heaven. Oh, weary ones of soul, I say to you, a time of great change in a seeming blink of an eye is upon you. For what has been written is about to be done. The integration, heaven meets earth, a most lovely convergence, and a union of polarities, 
a dance of duality. That's the beautiful. time, the time of depolarization on your sun, your planet, and within your very structure of your DNA is upon you. Your double helix DNA will no longer hold you in a separation or duality consciousness. No longer fear, no longer will fear hold you in bondage. You are converging with and being blessed by the heavens. Your very prayers for peace, love, and oneness have created the purification process that is happening around you and within you. Now you must understand how imperative this is, how critical it may become for all those who have chosen to place themselves in the center to realize their full potential, the Christed level of consciousness. For only with mercy, compassion, love, integrity, and faith in yourselves first can this level be reached. You are moving into the divine heart, or you could say the heart of your divinity, the heart of the matter. You have reached out and helped open the hearts of many people in your world. You have shed light on many things hidden in the shadows. You have placed truth in its purest form out there for all to see. You have worked hard to reveal to the self the truth about self and self-truth. Because of this, many truths are beginning to unfold all around you as well. As within, so it is without. This is most breathtaking, this experience, as we watch and see the beauty that is woven within the illusion. As truth begins to surface on a global level, all the people of Earth will start questioning why such important facts, important to their very survival and the survival of the planet, have been hidden, kept from implementation. You will begin to ask who these secrets serve. You will begin to see the wider scope of things. The pieces of the puzzle will begin to fit. Placed before many will be a whole new way of seeing. You will begin to realize that there is truth in the word. Things are not always as they appear to be. You will learn to see more deeply. You will learn to see with the heart. You will learn to trust what you have come to know to be true from past experiences and the use of wisdom therein to discern what is true and right for you. You will do this for a place of knowing, having learned from the lessons of these hidden secret truths. No longer will you accept a fear-based version of reality or truth, a watered-down version, a distorted version. Instead, you will demand that the truth be told to all people for the benefit of all people. The more grace you add to the current shift that is taking place, the easier the transition will be for everybody. All right? So some people have to do a little, little more work for those who can't. Like giving birth, it is so very important for you to be in and around water and to consume large amounts of pure water. Remember, this is a long time ago, so right now you don't want to be near water, just say. <laughs> <laughs> it is also most important that you breathe through the process. Like any birthing, flow with it. Breathe through it. It can bring great pain, but a new life. The breath is vital to all those who place themselves within the eye, the creation of this birth, the core of the ascending spiral. Listen to your own breath, for within it, you may touch the heart and the heart of heaven. I hold you near and dear. I am Saint Germain. And again, that came through months before 9-11. So. Well, that's, mm. that was absolutely beautiful. That was and it wild. was absolutely yeah. Perfect. The uh, the way it came through is exactly what it's hard to say in words, but that was my whole process. Uh, I use the violet flame a lot to transform, um, and part of that transformation process started with you, Pam, back last at the gathering, uh, because now I speak light language, and I'm learning how to heal through light language. And remember, um, Saint Germain said uh, he wanted to adjust my crown chakra and there was another girl um and you did that ceremony on us so yeah um, you and Raquel you and Raquel yeah. Remo. Raquel yeah. so we Raquel. we were um you know I've been doing uh, I've been working with a, a a mentor in using the violet flame to transmute and tra transmute the negative feelings I have um any um and I think everybody should sh you know, everybody um, can do this, and it really helps you in that process of, of, of ascending or um, lightening your soul. Because let's say you have a regret, or you have you you haven't forgiven yourself for something. I mean, it's it's a lot. It's about self forgiveness as well as forgiving others, and also going into your past lives. And you just ask for the violet flame of Saint Germain to come. And, and 
and you feel that feeling and then you allow, uh, you ask for the violet flame to transmute it to love and light and let the angels send it up. And I do that every day. Something else comes to my mind, like I'll forget. And something will come to my mind that happened 20 years ago that I really buried those feelings, you know. And um, But I had a lot of transformation through that. And, um, and of course, I worked with Susie Byler. Susie Byler, who we have on the show a lot, she's my mentor. She's younger than me, <laughs> and she's my mentor. Uh, she really taught me how to do, do the meditations for that. And uh, if you go to creationtemple.com, uh, you can see um, there's a, a meditation for the Violet Flame. You go to the Violet Planet um, but there's a lot. You could go on YouTube. You could, you know, key it in. So, but that was like so, so perfect. And there's so many people becoming awake and aware now. And I think it's really, really, ch- I think a lot of the timelines have changed because because people are making that decision. And it's really like, ex- it's, I can't even pronounce it, expedited. It's like... Yep multiplied so much more like let's say you have three people meditating well it's not six that it's going to affect it's going to affect 60 like it's just you know multiplying so fast expeditiously that's the word (laughs) that's the meditation said he said when collectively you focus on the same intent you can change anything like what you know standing rock Again, it's about directed energy. You know, some people have, you know, they, they understand that. Julie, I got two questions for you, or one's a comment. Sure. One thing you mentioned earlier about um, being, you know, somewhat selfish, even though you're out there in service, um, that, that, like, brought something to mind, because I've, I've told so many healers and people that I work with over the years, even my Reiki students, that if you're the well, right? People are going to come to the well to drink. They're there to drink from the well and the well can get depleted. If they're not filling it, they're taking from it. Who's going to fill the well. You're not good to anybody. If you don't love yourself and you don't keep filling your well, if there's nobody to fill it, if you want to keep giving and serving, you got to fill your own well. There's not always somebody there to do it for you. You know, right. And you you have to love yourself. And you don't, (laughs) and there's nothing wrong. You know, there's a difference between really being selfish and being selfish. You know, it's okay to take care of yourself. It's okay to go to the spa if you need to go to the spa. It's okay to wear makeup. It's okay to get dressed. It's okay to say, you know what, I have to put a boundary here. I got 10 people, 10 healings to do today, but I'm really tired. I need an hour nap. Like, it's okay, you know. That's called self-maintenance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're, you're a light worker, not, you're a giver, right? And you know what? When you're a giver and you're a light worker and you're all about service, then it's very important that you're in prime condition, all right? It's important. You're not really helping anybody if you're not helped and you're right. not doing good. Um, you know, it could it could be the difference between somebody really accelerating or somebody maybe not depends on whatever you're know, doing. I with know that. A, Pam, I know a lot of light workers that are, are sick all the time and they're doing healing for other people because they don't cut the energy. I don't think they're cutting the energy off when they're done. And, you know, you open an energy and then you cut the energy and then, you know, so, so you know, you need to do that, you know, make sure there's a, when you, you know, you're cutting the energy. You're not taking the sick person's energy with you. And also my you're teacher, just relaxing. My teacher basically was amazing. I had an amazing mentor. And that goes back into, again, the early 90s. You know, and <clears throat> one thing he taught about energy transference and all of that is that you're not giving your own energy. You're channeling, you're a vehicle for the energy to move through from you into from a higher place, you're like the middleman, messenger, the in-between person. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people think that they need to lay on your table and be healed by you as a third party. No, they don't. They don't need a middleman to God. Nobody does. We never did. But some people don't know how to connect directly and heal themselves and do all that. Right. That's why there's so many that do. All right, There's a lot of us that do know how to do that. Um, but you have to do that. All right. He used to say to me, healer, heal thyself. <laughs> 
Right. That's true. And I wanted to say before we, we go, um, we go back to Michael, I wanted to um, just I have some positive things that I um, I don't always watch the news anymore, but I did. Um, I actually was in the beauty salon getting my hair done, and I normally read. I I read the stupid. I try not to read them because you know the fashion magazines. They're like the worst thing you can ever read for your self confidence. <laughs> but I happen to like the magazine Town and Country, and it, it's it's a it's a rich person's magazine. The advertisements in there, it's all like Chanel, all the designers, and then they're advertising. They advertise like twenty million dollar mansions in the back. So I kind of like do my dream, you know. I I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at all the pretty houses and I'm going, oh, isn't that nice? I'm trying to manifest for myself. And they have the yachts. And so anyway, you know, for years and years and years, I would read this magazine and, and they would do articles and movie stories and different socialites. And um, so I just so happened, I was really surprised. They had a huge thing, a huge section on holistic healing. And they were talking about CEOs from companies that are trying to get their employees to do this with their health care. And there's even doctors um, that are prescribing acupuncture and uh, Reiki and um, so and, and light healing. And um, I was really shocked because I've been reading this magazine for like 50 years. And I'm like, you know, it's like, oh, my God, you know, I was so excited. And then the other thing, um, it looks, you know, the whole thing with um, – the climate thing with France, uh, when uh, I keep calling him Bush, and I don't know why, uh, President Trump, um, in my head I'm thinking Bush, I don't know why, but uh, President Trump, you know, he didn't want to, he walked out of the Paris climate change thing, but there were 25 companies that wrote to him that support the climate change thing, and one of them was GE Electric, um, it was mostly tech companies, um, there were a few uh, Walmart, um, uh, Walmart. Yeah, Please. believe it or not. Oh, and I'm and not. I'm not the other one? Um, that <laughs> the other one was Bank of Amer- um, Bank of America. All the bad guys. There were a couple oh. bad guys from you know that 2008 thing that fell. They actually believe that we're gonna we can create jobs through alternative energy so a lot of these big companies are actually you know there's white hats there's black and white hats in every organization i think the white hats are coming out and i was really happy to hear that these companies were starting to support that because that i think is that you know we we definitely have unlimited energy and we're gonna i do you believe pam we're gonna um we're gonna have that soon where it's gonna come out because that'd be again (laughs) <laughs> we might need sources of alternative energy in the future, because for a time anyway. Oh, it's interesting times. But Julie, I got a message for you before we get off the air. Okay. I, I jokingly, and I heard a chuckle and a laugh. Go for the mansion. Forget about the yacht. <laughs> go for the mansion. Forget about. We don't need to be near the water, Julie. Go in and I'll find a mansion mm. where the rest of us can gather. You Are need you a mansion from the people, Julia. The water, and we're going to get electric. That, forget the yacht. Go to the mansion, and in a safe location, you might have guests. Oh, okay. I wow. would love to have a big estate. Like in a way, it's like a big mansion, not a lot, Julia. <laughs> You're welcome to come. Oh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so are no, you they're saying, very funny. Are you saying the water, meaning floods, there's going to be tidal waves, or is it going to be electrocuted by the lightning? I wasn't sure. <laughs> I'm talking about a yacht is on water. They already said 100 miles inland from the water. So forget the yacht. Get the mansion somewhere right, in the safe right. zone. So, so you might have, have tidal company. waves, I guess, is what you're saying. That's scary. Uh, yeah. No. Julia, we don't need a yacht right now, dear. Unless it's an ark. <laughs> yeah, right. Big enough to carry us all. That's right. Oh, you oh, guys there, goes, there goes my condo in Florida. I better sell it really <laughs> fast. <laughs> no, no, Florida. Sell that, right? You might need it for the mansion. 
<laughs> it's not that much money. Trust me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> hey, everybody's going to maybe uh, pull their resources and get a mansion. Hey, I'm just joking. You but know, hey. no, we could probably <laughs> do that. We, I would love to do that. Pull, I'm, get, putting get out there. I'm putting together. it out there. I'm putting it out there. Yeah. Listen, guys. I I just wanted to uh, ask you. Do you mind? Do you mind if I, um, uh, Julia, if, if I asked Pam a question that was asked a lot in the beginning of the show, almost the very beginning of the show? But I kind of waited for a while because it really wasn't relevant to what we were talking about at the time. Uh, but I think it's something that Julia, you might be interested in too. Uh, Pam, one of uh, our listeners in the chat room wants to know. What the heck is going on in Washington? <laughs> Loaded question. <laughs> okay. All right. What, so, yeah, just from, from you know. Thing thing I want to say, trial. Yeah. Listen, the biggest thing that I want to say, all right, I really, I want to say this. And I, only because I have a higher power talking to me. I am not a Republican. I don't generally vote anyway. I vote for a person and not a party, all right? And I already know how they voted in the past and where they stand on issues, and it isn't about if I support their issues, it's about if it's good for everybody else. Uh, that's what I'm looking at. So most of these people are not good for everybody else. They have their own little packs and their money, you know, people that invest in them and give all kinds of money to get them elected when we're supposed to elect people, not by money and corporations and all that, but by voting. And I don't like computerized voting because it can be hacked and, and played with. I, I prefer the old-fashioned write on a piece of paper and uh, to have some major monitoring going on by a crowd to make sure that these things are being calculated accurately. And it hasn't for a long time, all right? People are selected, not elected. That's a fact. So what's going on in Washington? Guess what? I don't believe at all that Donald was elected. He's not a politician. He might have a lot of money. He might be a corporate business person. All right. But I also think that no matter what flaws he's had with business and bankruptcies and whatever, any business person, even George W. Bush, um, you know, with uh, certain oil investments, um, I think it was called Harkin Oil. I can't recall exactly. I think it was. A bad investment, lost a lot of money, you know, and that happens. Right? It's just tough. It happens to business people. You never know what you're going to get when you try to invest in things. So it happens. And I'm not defending him, but I am saying he's got a lot of stuff up his sleeve, and he supports Edward Snowden and Julian Assange. He supports the truth. And there's a lot of people that are bent on making him look bad. They want him to because he supports the truth. All right. And I know that from a higher source. And so look around, if we're going to get any kind of real disclosure, it's going to come from a non-politician. He's one of us. He is. He's a, a corporate person like anybody out there like me or you that runs a corporation. All right? We're not a politician. He's never been in politics. He's not a lawyer. He doesn't have any of that. He's a regular American. All right? He cares about this country because he was able to live the way he has. Because it is a free country and you're able to build yourself up and do this or that, right? But, you know, the truth matters. The truth matters. And there's a lot of truth coming out right now. Everybody that said everything they've said about him in Russia, I knew from the beginning it was nothing more than all kinds of whatever, like to stir up all of the stuff that happened in the first few months after he was elected. And you know what? It's all, it all points to George Soros. And Hillary Clinton and a lot of other stuff. It just does. All right, and I don't want to get into politics, really. So you want to know what's going on in Washington? Um, I think that in these times, you know, that's getting struck at the roof. The roof is being struck. And they told me, and I think I actually said this on the air, Michael, in the past, that when the canary sings, it's going to be a high-level person that's going to take a lot of people down with them. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Whoever that is. <laughs> It's a high-level person that's not take going down alone. They're going to point, and that's it. A lot of people are in trouble all at once. So you're you're basically giving uh, giving Trump kind of like a a positive uh, connotation. You know, it's like it's like look, he's he's I'm not in he, he's not an I insider. Yeah. Remember what I said earlier? All is not what appears to be. Saint Germain right. said that. Right. 
don't look at the surface of what it looks like and what everybody else that you trust, the media, this, that, are telling you. There, we live on a prison planet because it's a stronghold of, you know, people like Rothschild and, you know, certain mm, right, right, right. powerful entities that there's so much money and power and whatever involved. Yeah, even Henry Kissinger's still alive. Don't think that, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> the old, the old heads of the Illuminati. Yes, I never trusted him. Just never, ever, ever. Even way, way, way under the Nixon. Never oh did. no, yeah, he he always looked fishy. Yeah, I agree. He looks like a hole. <laughs> 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 he literally looks like something that lives, should live under a bridge. Okay, I said it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Well, you asked about how I think about government. Whoever asked. That's a touchy subject. It really is touchy, but I think no matter, I mean, when Obama was in, they started a bunch of crap with him. Like, I think whoever's in there, they're going to start crap because it keeps the Congress from concentrating on what really needs to be changed to benefit everybody. That's why they do it. More than that, Julia, maybe we should end the show with this, really, because I'll tell you, it's the drama in the TV and the government and everything they tell us. You said there's all... There's an element of truth, but there's always a little bit of dis- disinformation or right. no information in, or, you know, watered down version of truth, like St. Germain said. Sure. We're not being told the truth. We haven't for a long time. And some of us just are born with the knowing that something isn't quite right. Well, that's exactly and what I was about people, ready to say. Yeah. Other people yeah. are going about their daily lives and they're still stuck in that, you know, matrix mentality that this is what you right. do. You go, you go to you come home, you do dinner, you do baths, you do the homework, and you go to bed. You know, the same thing. And then, you know, they're looking at, let's go on vacation. Well, what are we going to do this year? You know, and that's nice. That's like Earth reality. But there's something bigger coming down right now. And all that doesn't matter that much. Maybe your money and your time and resources should be um, funneled in a direction that's going to help the many. And, and, you know, I don't know. That's just my thought. No, I think it's a good thought. Smaller uh, communities working together. That's really that's the only way it's going to happen, Julia. We've yeah. always known that. We've always known that. And well, how else? Also known. Every time there's any tragedy in America, the people always rise and come together. We've seen that time and again. Right. Yeah. Hey, listen. I wanted to let you guys know before we wrap up. I got a. Uh, 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 a, an instant message from Ilona, who uh, thanks us deeply for uh, being able to share this information with everyone. They uh, they really really like the exposure because, and this is my theory. I think the more people know mm-hmm. what's going on, the less chance that someone will take the chance to hurt them. You know what I'm saying? That's why you hey, know, you know what. The hunter is becoming the hunted. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And pretty I don't soon. even know why they bother anymore harassing people. It's like everything is out on the Internet anyway. Like yep. I think People are tired. They're going through the motions at work. And by the way, that's another thing I wanted to bring up that's interesting about Bob Dean and some of the stuff he said about the vault um, when they were in military intelligence. Um, him and a group of people, when they were bored and there was nothing happening, they decided to pull files and check stuff out. <laughs> and Bob he talked about that. Yeah. And so well, they found out things just like Edward Snowden. When he was doing what he was doing, he found out what was really going on. He was like, whoa, this is so not cool, you know? Um, and so he pulled it. He literally pulled it and snuck out of there. Have you guys seen that movie, Snowden? Oh, I have yeah, it. If anybody yeah. wants to borrow it. Yes. All right. It's interesting. I never knew certain things about him um, that I found out during the movie. I really didn't know that he was that, that, that really, really like smart. I mean, he's really mm. smart. He's oh, yeah. No, no, no. He's he's a, he's a very intelligent man who, you know, I, in my eyes, he's a hero, a, an American hero for, for, you know, unlocking some of the stuff that now we now know. You know what I found out about him when this happened to Edward Snowden, when all this went down initially, where he had to leave the area and all that, he was 29 years old, which mm. is a Saturn return um, in astrology. That's his natal birth chart Saturn return at 29. Wow. And they can bring a major task. Saturn is the taskmaster. It could bring something major to task, meaning something you have to do. 
and he was 29. It's just amazing. Amazing. Right? Like well, he has a real purpose here to do that right then. Well, guys, I, th- I think we're going to have to wrap it up. Um, it was a great uh, it, show. It, 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 no, the show is too fast. That's the thing. It always we'll does that. Pam on again. Uh, but Pam, uh, Pam, uh, yeah, Pam can always come on. Uh, you're uh, you're the resident psychic, and uh, I think we should have you on maybe once every couple of months just to talk about uh, what's going on. Yeah. To you might want me on in a month at least or two. Oh uh, yeah, that, that yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that in like an update as this gets closer. Um, and you know, I'll keep in touch with you and Julie, of course. Anyway, oh sure, you know, what I find out anyway, and you know, maybe you guys will say, I think it's time to talk about this now. So, oh yeah, you know. oh yeah, we'll do, we'll do. So listen, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Next week is still TBA to be announced. Not really sure yet. Our good friend uh, Grant Cameron has given me uh, some leads on very, very interesting people uh, to uh, bring on to the show. So I'm going to work on that. And, uh, of course, I'll let you guys know what's going on. And Julia is going to continue to search through uh her crowd there to see if we can find more in very interesting people we're working on getting interesting people it's it's time to get the facts it's time to have more experience people that are know what yeah. they're doing yeah and, and next more week experience. i'll be at east city ranch yeah that's but gonna, I'll, I'll be cool. i'll be searching yeah we have no one there's not going to be much internet or phone there so right. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll be looking when I come back home. <laughs> no, notepad and pen, okay? Yeah. And Maybe we can I'll talk about it when you get back. That's good. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, thank you, Pam. Thank you, uh, Julia. And, of course, to our uh, illustrious producer, Bill uh, Skywatcher. Uh, it's been a great show. Guys, God bless. Stay on the good side and be there for yourself. We'll see you next week. <laughs>